Hello, Gnopsians. I'm sorry, I made us late. I'm the worst. Yeah, that's right. It's fine. <laughs> we it's, we were ranting. All, we rant off camera. We're like, well, we should probably do this rant on camera. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, we were ranting. I was. We were discussing uh, completely not related to anything remotely <laughs> work work like. Um, I had. Uh, I was given a piano that is 180. No, not 180. Sorry, 140 years old. Something like that. It's from. It's from the 1880s. Right. And um, it's this beautiful, upright, grand piano, sometimes called a boudoir piano. It's, it's mahogany. It's got gorgeous resonance. Um, and I just love that piano, right? And so I wanted to get it fixed. And they opened it up and they were just like, nope, it's not. It's, you can't. It's, oh. it's very pretty to look at. There's, you have, he's like, I've seen people do like bar conversions with these things, with these gorgeous cabinets. He's like, that's probably probably the best that that you're gonna get <clears throat> and i'm like i'm devastated because i love this yeah. piano Ugh. and That's and so then um so i got a second and third opinion and they're all like nope it's not it's not worth it go buy go buy a new piano and i just like i don't but i don't what? want a new piano i don't <laughs> want a new piano <laughs> i want this one yeah <laughs> um so yeah, I think yeah, the piano bar does sound nice. I think I'm literally going. I I don't know. So the thing about it is, is this piano is very old, and like I said, it's mahogany, so it's extremely heavy. Yes, it weighs like 650 heavy. pounds. So to even move it out of my living room requires professionals. At that point, yeah, I'm like, just take it to the dump. At the point I'm paying people, like I don't know yeah. if I'm ever gonna get to a project like that. Anyway, so I'm looking at the options. I saw like. I saw some really cool, like I kind of Googled around for a little while. I saw some really beautiful like conversions other people have done. If I scoop out a lot of the internals, it will weigh less. But like I could have to do like the disassembly like in my living room. Oh, and I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if I want another project in my life. There's so many, right? Like it's like, you, you see, <laughs> it's like an unfinished projects. The, um, yeah, mahogany is uh, it's, it's no joke. I mean, like my guitars here, they're all mahogany, um, and so I can just imagine a whole like piano made up of mahogany. It's like wow, I can imagine it's like probably really, really heavy. Really, really heavy, and it's, then it's got all of those internals that way, um, and so yeah, no, I just I'm very sad. I cried about my piano. I did. Um, I'm not. I'm not. No, I'm totally a crybaby. I was gonna say I'm not a crybaby. No, I'm totally a crybaby. I'm a crybaby. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm totally yeah. a crybaby. Yeah, You've so, heard me talk about being sick. I'm I'm the worst. Yeah. <laughs> well, someone someone um uh, this is a, a, a piano bar. I mean, don't don't. That's what someone said that does sound nice. Don't uh, uh don't knock it out. Uh, don't get rid of it too soon. Maybe maybe it'll uh it'll prove uh it'll prove nice um to be able to do that so yeah. um so yes so sorry we were a few minutes late we were actually just talking about the, the piano so uh, <laughs> so if uh um yeah if, if 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 anyone if anyone out there um watching this has has a suggestion to what what to do with hillary's piano we should like make that a hashtag or, or something on twitter where it's like okay, yeah. what to do with hillary's piano let's um uh maybe maybe you'll get a good idea maybe maybe yeah. or maybe someone out there uh, that fixes piano would like uh, they know someone that'll fix a piano that'll take a look at it but yeah, as you said um yes yeah tweet uh, tweet hillary what 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 to do with your piano um we'll see uh it might it might be fun it might be interesting so um yeah. on the other hand it's right next to my fireplace so if i did turn it into a bar right there like that would be gorgeous that would be nice be yeah some, exactly be something to look at yeah yeah exactly it would be something yeah and you just like just you would just hang out there all the time so yeah it's, basically uh, yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> have a drink in front of the fire right next to the ca the, the bar cabinet right i don't know yeah exactly <laughs> yeah so i have um let's see here uh no i, I don't really have a, an announcement today i think it's just ArgoCon. we we've we've we talked about ArgoCon a little bit i'm still part of the planning committee for north america there's going to be some news regarding ArgoCon coming out soon so, um, you know, I, I, I've gotten pinged multiple times on um, about ArgoCon and ArgoCon, um, you know, w w when's that going to happen in North America, uh, that sort of thing. And so, um, yeah, so we have news about that soon. So uh, stay tuned. Um, you know, you can 
um wait you can probably where am i here uh wasn't that in sunnyvale or something last september yep yeah last last september it was in the computer uh history museum in, yeah yeah um, i was there i just don't remember Mount, yeah Mount Mountain View. View. It I mean, is Mountain View. Yeah. Mountain View. Okay, yeah. So it was in Mountain View, um, which is it, it made it was pretty cool. Um, the computer science to have it there because you know tech and computer science and in Silicon Valley and all that stuff. And then it was it, a nice venue too, by the way. Yeah. It was a very nice venue. Yeah, it was really really cool. So, um, so yeah, so we we hope to you know um, do something cool like that again. Um, we're like kind of in the final stages of announcing something. So yeah, follow me on Twitter. Um, or um you know probably twitter is probably for now the best place to find me there um and we'll have an announcement soon so about argo con and also uh GitOps con as well i'm part of that committee um it's not a live demo i accidentally clicked that what's well, a live demo Hilarious. of me talking i guess yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> is um uh and get ups con as well uh we have an announcement coming up pretty soon there like i'm you know dealing with that, I'm part of that. I'm actually co-chair of that of that committee versus ArgoCon. I'm just part of the planning committee, but I'm co-chair in, in the GitOps working group uh, for the events committee. So um, we have, we have well, we'll have an announcement soon there as as well. So um, it's kind of a non-announcement announcement, an announcement about having an announcement in the future. Um, <laughs> so that's kind of really all all the uh, all the news uh, that I have on my side, and so. Um, yeah. So yeah. Yeah. So the announcement's coming soon. So make sure to get those CFPs ready, or at least the ideas ready for those CFPs. Um, and I'll announce that. Um, you know, whenever, whenever we have that. Yeah. You know, I totally submitted a CFP for KubeCon North America, and I don't remember what I submitted. I uh, that that happens to me. I, like I do it like the same thing. It's kind of like fire and forget. Yeah. <laughs> like you have an idea, and you kind of hammer it out, and then you're like, what did I submit again? Because then you have to write, then you actually have to do the presentation. So yeah, I have uh, to do the presentation. Um, I, I actually did. Um, so I, I uh, two weeks ago, right, we mentioned that I had I was going to do a presentation and get ops to the, the nonprofit community that I run, right. Mm -hmm. And I literally had the problem where I was try starting to try and make slides. And I was like, how, how do I even do slides for this topic that I, I know? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> so much about uh, I didn't do slides in the end. I actually just talked for an hour. I actually pulled up your book because I had the physical copy. Thank you for that, by the yeah. way, with me. Yes. <laughs> so I kind of pulled it up. I showed it. I linked them to where they can get it from the developer portal. And then I just talked <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and occasionally like thumbed through the book to make sure I wasn't forgetting something important. Yeah. Um, and I realized that I'm I'm like the worst as I, I no one no one should let me be a presenter anymore because I'm not going to pre-write my talks I'm just going to get yeah. up and do them and just start well yeah like I always say like like I always tell you like you should just like put a picture up and just like talk for thirty minutes I think that's probably probably better I think um, I don't know for for those who are watching if if you have the same after a while especially like if you're like one of the last presenters like people have seen so many slides and like in in so many like text dumps that at some point like just having a nice picture and ha and like listening to you talk is actually a nice like break in your brain to be like, okay, I don't have to read off the slide. I can just look at a graph and, you know, listen to this person's story. Um, yeah. It's pretty, it's yeah. pretty nice. Cause that, cause after like, especially something like ArgoCon or like KubeCon where you're just like, it's just information overload. Like you just can't process it so much. Uh, so much information is going on that like, it's nice having that break where it's like, okay, I can look at a pretty picture and, and, um, um, uh, and you know, kind of like take a break from like my brain, like the cycles in your brain so much. So uh, Waleed said, "Hey, someone has a mermaid tail hanging on the door. That's right. So it's, there, yeah. it's always there. It's always there. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not in the sea right now. I need my land legs. So yes, exactly. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. When you go back to the sea, then when you go back to the sea, then that's that's when that's when we don the tail. Yes. Um, yeah." <laughs> No, it's and that's exactly what I was about. I kind of like segues. I was about to say, like my I spend so much time curating my background. I would rather yeah. you all just like see what you can see in my background for yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for a half hour, an hour, or however long I'm talking to you, than than me trying to make. And I'm not going to make pretty slides. I'm so uh, <laughs> bad at them. I'm just so bad at them. It's just not going to happen. Like I I need somebody who does those things for me. Um. Oh, yes. Red Hat Summit updates. I was going to ask you about Red Hat Summit, uh, Christian, yeah. because uh, RH Tap. RH Tap. That's right. 
Yeah. RH tap. Uh, so, yeah. So RH tap for those that don't know, it's a Red Hat Trusted Application Pipeline. So it is basically an opinionated um, um, CI/CD platform. Essentially, source code goes in, application comes out, or I guess container image comes out. But the stuff in the middle is actually um, what's uh, what's what the uh, secret sauce i guess in in terms of what what red hat does so like basically we are saying okay how do we build secure applications with things with respect to like um you know a secure supply chain right s bombs vex information all that stuff anytime you build your application um you know we are like okay well like let's kind of like take what we do internally and kind of ex you know expose it out um, and uh, let folks play around with it. Let, let's see um, how you can build your application securely um, in a trusted, opinionated way. So this is kind of like our next-gen build process based on Tekton, Argo CD, um, uh, Stack, uh, Stack Rocks, I guess, ACS, um, that sort of thing, right? We, we like to dog food as much as we can here at Red Hat. So I, I heard a new mm. version of that recently that I'm converted to. It's called drinking uh -huh. our own champagne. Drinking your own champagne, yes. Drinking your own mimosas. We are drinking our own mimosas here. Drinking our own uh, mimosas they... here, yes. <laughs> I right. like that way better than the dog food one. So we're going yeah. with that from now on. Yeah, so we drink our own uh, mimosas here. Um, and yeah, so it's an opinionated uh, CICD platform. Um, be, uh, but it's focused on security and uh, trusted supply chain. So yeah. Um, and so uh, another another announcement, right, at Red Hat Summit was uh, trusted content, Red Hat trusted content. So um, again, nothing quote unquote new for Red Hat specifically. Um, Red Hat customers have always implicitly trust uh, things that you get from Red Hat, like, um, you know, the classic is like subscription manager, right, RPMs, but also like container images and Java um, dependencies. Right, like like you get something from Maven Central or something, or um, or you know Red Hat's repositories. Like you know we have tens of thousands of Java dependencies on just like Quarkus alone, let alone just like Java. Um, so it, nothing necessarily new there, except for the fact that now we're off now on top of the package that you already trust. Now you can verify that trust because we're going to give you the S bomb and Vex information along with those packages as well. So that's kind of like Red Hat's umbrella, uh, Red Hat's um, trusted um, uh, supply chain kind of product, right? There's kind of two products in there, uh, RHTAP and Red Hat trusted content. You can use them together, right? So you kind of have like this end-to-end -end information of like, okay, I build my application not only using trusted content, but also built it in a trust, you know, trusted way. And so um, you can have, you know, your seat, you can, um, Someone, uh, one of one of my coworkers, um, said that uh, it's uh, let your CISO sleep, right? Let your chief security <laughs> security office um, um, sleep, right? Because they have all the information. You now have all the information needed in order to do triage or to know what you have out there. So that's kind of yeah. like was the the and you know there was um, also what was it. Um, Project wisdom, wisdom got a got a big thing. No, they call yeah. it Ansible Lightspeed now. They changed speed, yeah. it. it was Project Wisdom for forever. There were even commercials about it being Project yeah, Wisdom. Yeah. They renamed it Ansible Lightspeed because that's, I feel like, who Red Hat is as an organization. This is who we are. Um, but yes, yeah, so Lightspeed was was demoed. It is um, generative AI for Ansible playbooks. Yeah. And um, I think, was that the seizing on the automation moment keynote i don't actually remember which talk that one was yeah they, it was pretty nice it. it's actually pretty neat because um what's really cool i mean because i i use uh github um was it copilot and mm -hmm. that, that is actually pretty good at writing um you know not just code but also like ansible playbooks so it's it's kind of pretty cool to get something that like will do it like even better right because it's like you know based on like information that we know almost like trusted content like you get kind of the stuff we already kind of curated automatically displayed there so that's kind of cool um as well so that's uh that was really really exciting to see yeah yeah sure. it's definitely um that's so exciting. I think the the last thing was um, hosted control plane, right? Oh yeah, uh, they yeah. demoed that. 
Um, so hosted control plane is an interesting one because uh, we internally we call it, I think the repo is even called hypershift, right? We, yeah, so we used to call it hy hypershift is what we, we called it internally. Yeah. So, yeah. So basically the concept behind that being that all of the, all of the things that make an open shift dedicated cluster open shift dedicated, right? Um, we now have like one control plane for, that can support OSD, or, or they don't call it OSD. It's it's actually a flavor of Rosa, um, which is a Red Hat OpenShift on Amazon. Um, so now now we're kind of like we've abstracted out our workloads, right? So that the customers OpenShift uh, managed OpenShift uh, isn't doesn't include a lot of that stuff, right? So we've reduced how much of customer compute we're spending in order to provide the managed experience. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's just a little bit like better. And then the, I think, uh, Waleed said it like the, con the cluster creation ended up being something like 15 ish minutes, which just for perspective, like standing up an open shift dedicated cluster takes about 45 minutes. I think yeah. it's gotten a little bit faster lately, but like that is huge, huge gains, improvement. Yeah. Yeah. Huge gains that they've made with this project. So, um, RH tap and hypershift are projects that I've been kind of like on the on the edges of helping out here and there doing some things now and again for more than a year um for both of them so nice. i was really excited to see them both go and like get get airtime airtime this summit um and yeah what's, gonna... go ahead no oh, i so said what's really cool is like like you were kind of saying is like a lot of the stuff we were like kind of doing internally anyway and it's like like let's you know I mean, let's let's have like you know our customers and end users um, also benefit from the things that we've been doing. So it's kind of like it's like we've especially like 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 um, like you where you're you're in these uh, managed services, right? As, as, you know, SRE sort of thing. It's like yeah, we've been doing kind of this stuff. It's kind of been like almost like pre-proven, right? It's not like we just like came up with these um, <laughs> kind of kind of the stuff. It's like yeah, like you know you know um, in managed services we've been you know doing some of this stuff and now we're kind of productizing it. So it's kind of it's kind of cool to be able to like see like you know this this cool thing that I've been working on that I can't really talk about now it's you know now it's out there so it's it's pretty neat. Yeah, and if you've been on the stream for a while, you've probably heard me talk about all these things in very vague terms. Yes, exactly. I've referenced yeah. <laughs> them in very vague ways. Um here and again so like i mean yeah, that's uh -huh. kind of like go go look for some easter eggs, go watch back to past streams and you'll hear me talk about some things and you'll be like uh, oh 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 that's maybe what that you was no maybe you yeah. won't know that's a good scavenger hunt one day mm -hmm. like we should do a scavenger hunt and I was like what did hillary allude to and which episode was it announced right <laughs> yeah and get yeah, yeah and get a free t-shirt or something um i have the, all the swag that would actually yes. be good i am in possession of all the swag yeah. uh for get ops guide to the galaxy so coffee mugs yeah. or t-shirts i can literally do that i have the yeah, power so to send those out as prizes for things that's Sweet. that's a fun one um, so speaking of, um, Easter eggs, it's, mm -hmm. yeah, no, that's a good one. Uh, yeah. and speaking of having, <laughs> having, having really having too many projects in my life, we talked about yeah. that. Let's yes. talk about another project that I pay attention to. I've actually, I've been so bad. I, I need to get, yeah. I'm, my, I promised myself this Friday for day of learning. I'm getting back into this, but anyway, yeah. um, we're going to talk about feature flags. Yes. Um, because there is a CNCF sandbox project called Open Feature, which I'm just going to link everybody to the spec to right now. And because I'm that's what I happen to have open and I'm too lazy to go find you a better link. You're welcome. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> look, I told you all on Twitter, I'm a stressed out bird this week. I'm a stressed out bird. Like, yeah, we're getting, <laughs> yeah. you're getting me at like 15% capacity for thought yeah, right now. Like, we're going to be real yeah. honest here. Yeah. <laughs> That's that's what we have. That's what we're working with. Anyway, so um, let's talk really quickly about what a feature flag is. Yeah, I think um, yeah, starting there would be would be would be good. So feature flags. Let me see. When was the first time I heard about a feature flag? I think the first time I heard about feature flags was like, oof, uh, 2012, something like that. It's somewhere around there. Yeah, somewhere around there. Yeah, somewhere around there. And so what a feature flag is, is it's actually, it, it, it goes back into your source control, right? And this is, it's a thing in Git. And it basically is like, if true, if the feature flag is true, 
then yeah. the code that it precedes is executed or evaluated. It's it's essentially like a, you know, if if true. So and and what is if like it could be just like a boolean like this is on this is off it could yes. be dates like if current time is between this date and this date then do, then this is on otherwise don't right yeah. and so it's off right it, it could be you know um geolocation based if the traffic is coming from from here do this thing otherwise don't do this thing so like that's how you could say like i can't show this content to people in Asia, but I can have the content on my website, right? You can use feature yeah. flags for that. So that's what it is. So it's 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 a essentially a couple lines of code in in your repository that um, ba basically define the state of mm -hmm. code, other code, right? Yeah. I don't know. Again, we, we have me in like execute. So, yeah. <laughs> there we go. Execution. Yeah. Again, execute code depending on certain parameters, right? So yes. it's it's a it's it's a little bit so like when when I first you know uh, start started like when I first heard about like feature flags and like implementing them for me, I thought it was only with respect to like um, turning on like certain features for certain people to test them out right in a market right. So like let's say you're you have an application out there you want to test something to um to a specific user like oh turn that feature flag on for that user and they have that code executed when they're logged in but it's like much much more deeper ecosystem than that because as you as you mentioned um it could be geolocation right specified there's like in certain regulatory you know um like like you kind of mentioned there's certain like in certain countries you're not allowed to do certain things so like you have to turn it off in some region, turn it on, you know, and it's fine for other regions. Um, you know, it's not just for like, you know, testing features for testing purposes, although there's that aspect to it, you, you can do that as well. But also, um, you know, executing code, depending on certain parameters, like it just, it doesn't have to be, um, you know, just features, like, although it's, it's, even though, in the name it says feature flags features it doesn't have to be just features it could just be you're just turning on blocks of code um depending on something right it is yep. just certain parameters so yep. um so that's that, that's kind of cool where and and I, I also kind of distill it down to like for those that are kind of like um are, are, are like to get into the weeds of kubernetes right when you turn on the kubelet there's different flags that you can pass to it to turn on certain features that i guess in a way can be thought of as uh feature flags as well um, that's very, that's an oversimplification, but like, it's, it's basically, um, 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 uh, kind of like a, a way to distill it down to, at least for me to kind of like understand it at a baseline level. And then you can start like, you know, thinking about it from a, from a high level, higher level as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, what is, what is the best way that I want to put it? It is sort of like, uh, environment variables plus plus. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, environment variables plus plus. Yes, exactly. So, um, so is it really executing code or a binary pre-installed on a container? Right. This is a great question. So, what what we were just talking about with feature flags back in 2012. This was this was really um, this was this was monolithic applications, right? Um, and so it would be kind of like a lot of the times if we were doing it, and that was that was sort of part of what kind of limited the. Um, Sort of limited the implementations to a, a kind of like testings for certain users or like blue greens or something like that because they would do it based on like okay so like if the user logged in user is this person then they can see it. and there'd be like some lookup table or something like that that actually like validated that so it's kind of all handled on the um mm -hmm. on the, that side so now it's a little bit more sophisticated so now we're looking at something like open feature which is designed for um more cloud native applications obviously um so what you usually have is you actually need the 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 SDK binary. So basically what will happen is you have a feature flag um, set with its rules. And then there's something that needs to do the evaluation of the conditions to see if the conditions for the flag are met or not. So again, those conditions could be date time. They could be true false. They could be geolocation. They could be um, logged in user. It could be session based. It could be session duration. If this user's been logged in for this much time, then do this thing. It could be um, some other flag, for example, which is like, you know, if you want to say like, oh, show show our terms and conditions, but like 
only if it's been updated since X time, like technically you could mm -hmm. actually do that logic with feature flagging as well. So like, that's kind of a weird rabbit hole case. Like you could theoretically do, do these types of things with the, the thing. So there's, you have to have for whatever feature flag um, system you're using, uh, you have to have uh, an SDK that goes in so that not only can the flags be set in the code or the rules, um, but then there's this something that can, that is doing and running and does the, does the evaluation. So that could be, um, that could be its own container. Um, again, it could be, if you're looking at monolithic applications, which is still, you could do, it could be, you know, part of a monolithic application, um, that, it, it, that, that's going to, going to go into like actually like your literal topography of your application and how you're implementing it. So, um, the reason I like feature flags is it's, it's not GitOps, but it's not, not GitOps. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's kind of like Well, it's it's part of the software development life cycle, right? Which GitOps yeah. kind of sits sits in there as as well. So it's these things you'll have to know, right? Like it says yeah. GitOps adjacent is what you what you would say, right? It's like it's There's a it's near Venn right. diagram here. Yeah. <laughs> like one, it Git is the source of truth, right? So there's that that aspect of it, right? Two, there is a reconciliation aspect to it as well, although it's not so like, you know, it's one of those things, like if you look at the rules of GitOps, it's like, eh, sort of, mostly. Yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not necessarily DevOps. It can be, it totally can be, but it's not necessarily, it's a little bit broader, broader scope than that. So it's, um, I like this type of thing a lot. Um, and I like, so I like, I, I, I saw this project, they were looking for uh, help maintaining the Python SDK. Um, and I was like, I could probably do that. And then I had some conversations with them. And so I'm like, I think I'm technically a maintainer. I, I, it's very underdeserved. Um, I was starting <laughs> to get really into the swing of things. And then I had um, some personal things come up with my my grandfather's health. And I had to kind of step away from outside projects to, to help my family out with that. And then now I'm kind of like going back into the... Um, going back into trying to like do into this. So, like I promised myself today's the, the, this, this, this quarter's day of learning, which I think is this Friday. Um, I'm getting back into this and yeah. picking up some of the issues. Like if you go to the Python SDK, like you'll see, I opened some issues and stuff against it. We've had some conversations about direction and where things should go and so forth. But anyway, that's a long winded way of saying they have several SDKs, not just the Python SDK. They have yeah. the, um, they have JavaScript, they have Java, they have Golang, they have Python. There probably is everything. Yeah. Um, well, I like every major one, right? It's like, and yeah. I think this is this is the first time um, that like something like this has been done with with feature flags. As, as like before, like it was very very specific to the runtime or which whichever. Um, um, uh, language that you're writing in is it was like very very specific and now it's it's kind of like there's like one open specification right i think the Correct. that's the big thing is the specification yeah the specification is really big um the other thing is that if you're already using a feature flag solution the idea isn't that you have to fully replace or migrate it's that it does a normalization mm -hmm. so you can you can kind of expand the functionality by using open feature and then not like leave your your current feature flag provider or your whatever your custom solution is um or if you need to if you're thinking about changing providers because it's done it does a normalization you should be able to wire it up to the new provider that you're thinking about and with like kind of a lower level of effort you don't have to rewrite everything you've already done from scratch which can be can be a thing so um yeah I'm trying That's to remember true. if I signed an NDA for this. I didn't. Um, before yeah. <laughs> I came to Red Hat, I interviewed with a company called Launch Darkly, and Launch Darkly is a like feature flag SaaS service. Um, and so, um, I implemented. Uh, I, I you know did the code test implement implement Launch Darkly on something that you do right. So that, I did that. Yeah. And so it's. They have kind of a certain way of doing things a certain way. It's just like things like, you know, tag it this way or whatever. Right. So it's just kind of like if you want to use them, if you want to use, I don't even remember. Um, so I think that this has actually been donated to the community by um, flagged is the name of the company. Um, if you want to work with, you know, do the, do theirs, some other thing, some custom thing. The idea is that by having an, an open and consistent spec, right, you create a normalization and then you just kind of do you don't have to rewrite all of your feature way you've done and implemented yeah. flags in your system as you 
move to one or another back end. Um, somewhere around here, I can't remember where I saw it. I was just looking at my phone, so it, it does exist. Somewhere around here, they <laughs> it actually does put exist. together. <laughs> yeah, I was I was watching it before this morning just to double check. Um, they actually have a little, um, and I say little because it's like five videos playlist of. Um, Oh, that's why it's not going to show up because that's my work YouTube account. That never shows me anything useful. Let's go to the yeah. <laughs> let's go to my personal <laughs> one where where I actually watch things. Um, all right, that'll show me in my history. Um, they actually have a playlist about about like high level concepts. Oh, within, okay, yeah. Within the within the project to kind of get you get you going. Um, that is an evaluation context. You know what? We'll just subscribe to that. Here's the channel. Yeah, you guys can. <laughs> You guys can work from the channel. You don't need the playlist. What's kind of cool is they op also support PHP. I'm not looking at openfeature.dev. It's like, all right, there we go. Like, I mean, that's the first that's time large. I use. That's the first time I used feature flags was in PHP. Yeah, it was in PHP. Yeah. <laughs> as much as I have taken that off my resume and try to never admit to knowing PHP or having worked with PHP or written yeah. PHP, that was that was that what, was the first. Um, yeah. <laughs> that was my first exposure to it. Um. So yeah, um, and so this is a pretty interesting uh, community. It's got um, folks from Dynatracer involved. Obviously, like yeah. I said, I'm kind of, kind of, I was involved. I had to kind of step back. I'm trying to get back into it. Involved. Um, others are starting to pick it up. I saw in the there is a um, CNCF Slack channel for Open Feature um, nice. that people can join. So people are kind of introducing themselves, what companies they're from. I don't think there's any state secrets in there. Like somebody's like, hey, I'm from Spotify, and we're going to use this thing now, right? Like, cool. Um, yeah. <laughs> so um like so it's it's getting some it's getting some cool traction um you you somebody posted about it on twitter and you tagged me like oh you know she knows some things here like i i do i know so i know some things yeah. um <laughs> some things and stuffs right like some it's... things and some stuffs yep yeah. yep so um anyway so it's just a kind of a neat little neat little thing um and i really appreciate feature flags uh because of um they're kind of just, it's just a little nifty, powerful tool, I guess is like yeah, the best way I yeah. can say it, right? Well, it's, it, especially like an SRE, right? Or like you're trying to deploy something, um, they, they come in handy for sure. They, they, mm -hmm. they, definitely for sure. And I think, I think Martin, Martin, I, I already, um, I already posted this, um, but I'll, I'll show it again. It's just like, you know, um, uh, controlling rollout scope is one of the trickiest things to do in a large fleet, right? And so, and, and um, you know, there's only so much you can do with things like uh, canary deployments. Mm -hmm. um, and even like in a canary deployment, maybe you don't want to turn on it, everything that's available. Um, and just, yeah, just like things are tricky. And this is just like another like tool tool in the belt, right? Like um, that you can use uh, to help the uh, um, your, your GitOps rollouts, right? So you're, you're get out, rolling out a, a new version or, um, you know, update on something um, you know, you don't have to destroy the world, right? To, to, you don't have to destroy production. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah right, you and it's, it's kind of a difficult concept to grasp, but sometimes, um, depending on how you've implemented your feature flags, um, you can usually make a change to the condition to turn the thing off, right? So if you have something that's going on, it's like pretty high risk. You can do all the canaries and everything else like that, but at the end of the day, like it's still pretty high risk. You can, there's some of the some of the back ends like I know for I don't I don't want to plug launch darkly especially because like they ghosted me in the interview process <laughs> yeah. um, but like it, a nice feature about them was it actually was like a okay you could change the condition of the feature flag within their system and that yeah. actually didn't require rolling like re-rolling uh, your application right you don't have to roll anything yes, back out so exactly um, that that is actually a very nice thing. Um, it's a very, very handy uh, tool with, with feature flagging. Uh, so since you don't actually, you don't, and again, it's kind of a hard paradigm to like really wrap your head around. You actually kind of have to do it to understand it. Um, but the fact that you can turn turn the thing off um, or expand its scope uh, without actually having to re-roll anything, that's extremely powerful. Um, yeah. I think, um, if, if think about it like some ways, it's like when you if you want to change the debug level of something, Right, it, changing changing the debug level of something doesn't usually require fully like reload rerolling your um 
your application. It can if you do things differently, but like it's something that we do in, in SRE land a lot is like, well, it's like change the debug level on an application by making a, a change in the, um, what's the uh, word I'm looking for? I told yeah. you my brain is not braining. <laughs> yeah, yeah, brain. You, you need a, I needed to, uh, um, what? what do you call it? Um, send you a coffee, coffee, right? What was, what, yes. what, what do you make your coworkers do with a, um, Postmates or no, or yeah. Or... <laughs> yeah. Any, anything I have, I do. I have this rule. So I'm in California where he's Christians in California. Sometimes people want us to go to meetings early and I will go to yeah. any meeting from 7 AM on with only minor protest. Um, yeah. <laughs> but if you want me on a meeting earlier than 7 AM, you had better send me coffee and a breakfast sandwich. Yes, that's there. right. I will be there. Yeah. That. If you do that, that's right. That's a surefire but, way. But if you do not do that, I will not be there. Anyway, there. yeah, no, yeah. coffee is always good. Uh, yeah. I would love to have had time tile to do a demo for this. I really wanted to. It's just not, mm -mm, not happening. Yeah. Um, it was. Yeah. So was if, not if someone does have a future. demo, drop it in the uh, drop it in the chat. Right. We'll be happy to share it for sure. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, anyway, so I think that's that's one of the things where it's kind of it can be it can be a little bit of a, a mind. Like, yeah, shift. they're almost like, how how does it work? And it, again, it's the, the SDK that that is running. It's kind of doing continuous evaluations yeah. and so forth. And so it's, that's, that's yeah, it's a it changes. It's a runtime thing, right? And it's kind of like mm -hmm. what you have you have to think about it's like, OK, um, we can turn on certain features without having to re roll out the application like the you, you, you know, you don't um, you know, you turn on a feature flag and then all of a sudden some, you know, that feature, something pops up in your screen, like, oh, okay. I didn't see that menu item. Like that's kind of like the, the best way to, um, 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 to kind of visual, um, I guess, visualize it, or I guess conceptualize it is like you're, you're, you're navigating some UI and all of a sudden a new menu thing pops up. It's like someone just turned on the feature flag without, without having to go through the the process of rolling something out. I think that's also a powerful thing. It's like, oh, hey, a new thing popped up and they didn't have to do a massive rollout, right? Like they already rolled out that feature a while ago, probably during off, off, um, offline hours, right? They did the whole, you know, rolling out of that feature. And then now they're just turning it on for certain people or turning on for certain regions or now just turning it on for certain conditions, right? Like yeah. if you, if you come from, I remember, if you come from a specific IP address, right? Like they would like grab that or like a certain header information. It's like, if you come from a certain IP address, then, you know, very good for CEOs, right? Or CTOs that are trying to, <laughs> trying to see something that, oh, they just turn it on for this IP address and they'll be able to see it. So uh, I think yeah. that's also another cool thing. You don't have to re-roll out your application. It's already built in. It's just certain conditions were met in order to, to display things, so. Yep. And you can you can alter its understanding of the conditions based on like I said, date times like that theoretically can be done. Like you can alter the understanding of the conditions based on whatever you have as like the back end control. So if you need to, like I said, have like an interface that says, okay, during these dates, and then you change the dates. Or it's like a true false flag, it's either on or it's off. You do that, right? Somebody is logged into the chat program so we can display that there's a live person about around to chat with you or not, right? Like mm -hmm. those those are the like, basic like types of things that you can do with feature flags. It's kind of the power and you don't have to redeploy anything. Um and like like you said, if we need to mitigate risk, we just we just turn it off. Um it wasn't the, the YAML is where I was thinking about the debug level on the pods. Yeah. Container. It's just in the uh, okay, yeah. It's, it's just in the, the definitions. Anyway. Um I'm so my brain is just not braining, guys. I'm so sorry. Um I would have loved <laughs> if, to like I said, I would love to have done, <laughs> had a demo ready. I have been in absolute and I think part of this is just like I didn't have anything for my team actually being shown at Summit, but I had a ton of things I was waiting on people to be done with Summit in order to work towards. So it's like all of a sudden these people who were away for summit or like busy and like getting ready for summit land, all of now they're suddenly available to do all the things they've been waiting on. And it was just like a deluge of attention and, <laughs> and, and every, like there was like all that, it was, it was a really that summit was the calm before the storm for me. And I'm just like, Oh my gosh, I can't, I can't. So it's been, it's been a long week. I so glad tomorrow is Friday because I'm, I'm, I'm yes. totally like, stick a, stick a fork in me. I'm done. Um, yeah, 
it's like uh that's why you need the bar the the piano bar it's why piano bar. the piano bar this I'm, just, I'm trying to push you towards that direction for the piano bar <laughs> Man, oh, you're just gonna have to. You're gonna be sleeping on my couch helping me do this. Is what's gonna yes, happen. Yes, exactly. Exa <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like here, here's a um, uh, here's some, here's a, here's the toolbox. Here's the uh, sander and uh, get to work. Yeah, basically, exactly, exactly. So it's um, yeah. If I need that piano bar, I do. It's just there's nothing yeah, else it, for there's it. A piano bar. It could be a piano coffee bar. So there, there's another <laughs> an, an espresso machine. I right did. I, so the thing is, is during the pandemic, when I was staring at a part of my house I hated, I found I decided to actually have someone build me a custom. It's uh -huh. not a wet bar. It's a dry bar, a custom bar cabinet. Yeah. And my espresso machine is there and I've got all my barware in it and stuff like that. And it's like I do already have a oh, bar in my house. There you, there you go. <laughs> kind of why I'm like, I don't really need it actually would be a third bar because third my bar. kitchen it separates from the dining room with a bar top. Oh, okay. So, well, then name, then it's a backup to your back. It's like an N plus it's two like, sort of. Yeah. <laughs> it's an N plus. I think you just have it, levels. right? Yeah. The levels of redundancy yeah. on that. Yeah, I levels know. of redundancy. Yeah, there was there was a conversation about levels of redundancy that I found very interesting and I, going completely off topic about <laughs> like about backup schemes is like you have, yeah, an HA bar. Um, a high level have, bar, yeah. Yeah. That you have like um, your backup to your backup to your backup, and then like it's like what do they call it? A four three three two or four something like essentially like you have you know you have your data, and then you have like four copies on site, and then you have three copies off site, and then you have two copies like in you know in another off site or something like that. It was kind of a, a breakfast oh, yeah, bar. Yeah, that's yeah. actually that's actually another good one, FYI. Not a bad idea. Um, so yeah, inception disaster recovery where the disaster is I'm out of alcohol. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, that could, that could work. It could work. That, that, um, yeah. <laughs> I could always use, I could always convert it into a bookshelf too. I suppose I don't have a bookshelf in my living room. I could do that. That would be slightly more responsible of me. S slightly Although, more responsible. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I kind of like the bar idea. Anyway, we'll see what I do. We'll see what I do. Um, yes. So remember, yeah, if, if, if any of you watching this member have any ideas, uh, go ahead and uh, tweet Hillary there. Um, so I think, and also... I'll post pictures of the piano on Twitter. Like, we're there you doing go, this. yeah. We're there doing this, get off the We're end. doing this, we're, yes, right. <laughs> we're, we're designing my new, my piano conversion by committee. We're doing yeah, this. Tell Hillary, Hillary what your desired state is for the uh, converted piano, and then we'll we'll reconcile that. So, yeah. um, tell the, these sure. bookshelves are in my man cave. This is yeah. not my living room. This is my man cave. That's so right. Yeah. Like, that, yeah. I have note, to go up an entire staircase. Tale. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, note the mermaid tail. It's the man cave. Yeah, it's so. The man cave. Um, <laughs> Cool, cool. So, um, so yeah. So, is is open feet? So, going back to the topic. So that that this I didn't know actually. Um, is open feature? Was that donated to the CNCF or is that is it a uh, is it governed by something else? Do you know? So that's an excellent. So it's a CNCF sandbox project. Okay, so sandbox. All right. Yes. So it that that's its current status. Um, and the again the company behind and that's done a lot of the the development driver from it is, is called flagged. Um, so, and they're, okay, they're cool. very, very nice, uh, very, very nice people. Um, like I said, there's, there's some folks from Dynatrace involved as well. So it's, yeah, it's I thought it was a Dyna... ecosystem going. Yeah. Cause I've talked to some, so I, when I was at, um, GitOps con in Vancouver, I talked to some of the, uh, Dynatrace folks there and they were like, they're really, um, uh, uh, they were really excited about open, open feature and, Actually, I'm not sure. Uh, uh, Stacy Porter, um, I don't know if she reached out to you, Hillary. I, t I told her about. Okay, I'll, I'll I'll have to make that introduction. She used to be at WeaveWorks, but now she's at Dynatrace, um, and uh, she's really really excited about. It. I'm like, oh hey, I, Hillary's really really excited about it. So I, I I need to make that introduction. So I have that on, on my uh, on my to do list there. So okay, so it's a, a CNCF sandbox project, um, and. Uh, uh, there's there's a, a bunch of folks that are um, that are jumping on it. I know Dan Shepard. This like you said this morning, he was really, really excited about it. I'm like, okay, so it's gaining some traction. So I'm like, hey, yep. let's let's do 
I know you've been wanting to do a stream about it for a while. I'm like, yeah, let's just do it today, right? So, um, uh, since you know, this morning Dan Shepard was talking about it. So, um, um, so I think it's a uh, a very interesting way, right? Like, kind of like a a, a way to kind of put some like a industry standard spec, right? Like, I. I I'm all about open standards, right? I'm part of open get up. So it's like, yeah, let's put like an open standard around it. So we all talk the same language. Um, very, very important, right? Where it, especially in open source, um, when there's a lot of proprietary way of doing things, it's kind of cool to have kind of like an open standard. It's um, like, like you said, when you're moving from system to system or from language to language, it's kind of cool to be able to have like an open standard that you're all uh, following. Yeah, exactly. And so, um... A, a lot of the a lot of the really interesting technical discussions and like issues that are opened up against the various SDKs are kind of exactly around like okay how given the differences between languages what's the most normal way we can do this thing so that it's understandable to the widest like audience I am absolutely loving that about this community and and what we're seeing there um, I again the fact that it's kind of like creating a normalization around feature flagging, like, uh, like I said, like, or you said, like a standard, and it's kind of, um, it's one of those things, like, it's almost like from my, me, my perspective, like my, my thoughts on this was like, it's about time, because feature flagging is not, yeah. it's not new. Yeah, it's, it's not new. So that, that, you know, some bodies have stepped up and like to the plate, and like, we're doing this. And, you know, they've invested the time, they've invested the money, they've, they've put it out there, they've, they're working on creating like such a, a welcoming community. Um, there's a lot of reasons I'm excited about it, both technical and like basically just about the nature of the community. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm I'm hoping to get other people excited about it. People have asked me like, hey, what's a good open source project to get involved with? And I keep pointing them at this one. I was like, yeah. there are <laughs> any, anything you need over here. Like it, it does all the cool things. Um, so I, if you're looking to get involved in an open source project, I'm pointing at the part of my screen that has it on my screen. You can't see. I'm yeah, yes, it's, it's, <laughs> pretend, <laughs> pretend it's here and I'm, I'm pointing pretend at it. Pretend it's so. here and I'm pointing at it. Yeah. That's what I recommend. I, part, again, like it's got um, a dedicated maintainer group who cares and is very excited about it. And I'm ho hopeful to, to be worthy of my, my spot in that little, little cohort of awesome people. Yes. Um, <laughs> because I was like, oh, wow, that was really undeserved. But thank you. Uh, so. That's a good one. It's a good one. I, I'm excited to see where this where this project continues to go as it's it's kind of gaining momentum popularity. By the way, they had a booth at um, KubeCon Amsterdam. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. All right. We oh, all kind of oh. met up and had a meeting there. Oh, at the um, open source pavilion thingy. Mm -hmm. Okay, gotcha. Cool. Yep. yep. Yeah. There was a little meeting there. They had T-shirts. I I got one of those T-shirts. It's I'm not wearing. That's a cool place to hang out. By the way, for those those yes. that need that uh, KubeCon uh, tips and tricks. Go to that little open source pavilion and just like visit each one, um, and you, it's essentially half your day. Like you have so many great conversations, talk about hallway tracks and and things like that. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's kind of cool to be able to, um, um, you know, talk just like you know with um, with other folks. What's really funny is they always put. I, I they probably do it on purpose. They they put like the flux booth and the Argo booth like really really close to each other. And like since like it since I'm part of like the open GitOps, which like has people from both groups, like I'm able like it's kind of like a big kind of GitOps, I don't know sphere. I don't know. It's kind of cool to be able to talk to uh, talk to folks um, from uh, from the community, right? So that's yeah. which is what what open source is all about is community. So um, and and yeah, like get it like getting involved. Like there's 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 things also um, that you can do that has nothing to do with code, right? Like the, like you know like Open source communities need help everywhere, um, and uh, actually, let me let me drop this here. Uh, uh, I will do a open GitOps uh, discussion here. It's always hard to see. There we go. So uh, you know, in the last ten-ish minutes that we have here, I do have. So if someone wants to be able to contribute something. If you are artistically inclined, um, we are looking for, uh, this is a good conversation, right? And I always have my two cents there. So if anyone else wants to put their two cents there, um, go ahead and do that. But talking about like a generic GitOps icon, um, 
so it's like oh like there's not really like everyone kind of uses their own thing it'd be kind of cool to have like an open source one or a kind of generic open source one that everyone can use so again this is like a thing i don't think any of us us geeks in uh, open get ops knows how to draw so like if, if you're artistically inclined um you can even contribute there like you know yeah. in, a, in in a non non-technical way but in, in a way we all need. Um, yeah, writing on exactly those coattails, um, there's a request for an animated GIF icon for open feature that I just also linked, kind of same thing, if you are artistically yeah. inclined or you like animation. <laughs> um, that's another one. Um, there's always, documentation always needs check, checking over and verification. Um, art is always is something that is always appreciated because you know a lot of us are not artists um yes. please don't you don't you don't want to even see me attempt to be <laughs> an artist like um the, i'm not yeah. even like a good musician and i own two pianos that's the other thing is i still have a functional piano it's just a spinet piano that i don't enjoy playing yeah. <laughs> so i still i own two pianos and a flute and i used to also have a saxophone but i donated it and like i, I play a bunch of instruments poorly <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't want to be subjected to that you less so want to be subjected to my attempts at yeah, art yeah like if you catch uh tall you didn't catch the first part we the first part we talked about like how we didn't um uh creating slides is hard especially for like tech people uh H hillary will be the first one to admit that she hates creating slides so yeah like there's there's just things that you know you can be good at to contribute that is not just code so um so uh yeah so that's another another thing look at the guitars christian has is he a good musician yeah you haven't heard me play yet i it, it's so so when people always ask right you know as we're in the, the final minutes here uh, uh of, of the stream um always ask them like oh you play guitar I'm like oh yeah i've been playing since i was a kid it's like you know um are, are you any good i go it, it's 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 not that i'm any good is that i i don't play what i call sexy guitar meaning that like you're not gonna see me like playing like john mayer or jason mraz or anything like that like i'm like really into heavy metal so like if you're looking <laughs> i'm like it may sound like noise to you i swear it's really good <laughs> but it may sound like just like noise to you um so i always tell people are you any good and i goes well i don't play sexy guitar if that's what you're asking it's not sexy at all <laughs> it's very aggressive um <laughs> so uh yeah so w w one day maybe i'll i actually do have a scarlet 2i2 here maybe i'll plug in my guitar there maybe um i'll, I'll do maybe a little demo here and there yeah, I've known you for more than a decade. I've never heard you play guitar. Yeah, yeah. So there, there you go. I, I, I need to, I need to do something. Or maybe put it on YouTube or on, on, um, on, uh, on Twitter. I follow someone from Google. Um, I forget his name. I'm better with faces. I forget his name, but he he posts his guitar thing. I'm like, you know, one day, I, you know, I'm, I'm gonna start doing that because it's like there's a tech Twitter or tech, you know, part of the part of the. Um, uh, of the tech world that they also are instruments. So they're like they're geeky in different ways. So I think that's really cool. So tenacious yeah. D yeah, maybe, maybe not, maybe. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's anything people always ask me, can you play this song? I'm like, no, but I can learn it. So if that's any indication of how I play, <laughs> um, um, uh, I can't remember the name of the band, but it was like, they're a Japanese band and they're like, it's like heavy metal, like screaming guitars. And they do all the soundtracks for, um, one of the fighting games, Guilty Gear, Guilty Gear. Oh, uh -huh. you, I, something, I feel like the name has got dragon in it, but I don't know for sure. Or maybe that's just one of the songs. Anyway, I have a friend who he used to, that was what kind of guitar he played. So it was just like, yeah, it, it's. It's not sexy guitar, like you said. Yes, um, it's not sexy guitar. It may sound like noise to you. But it's cool. Uh, but because it's, you yeah, have to play yeah. so fast. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. So, cool. Um, so, yeah. So, it. Uh, any any questions, any comments from the, you know, we, we started a little late, uh, but we are at the top of the hour. Um, so, if anyone has, like, any questions, any discussion points, um Again, if you missed the top of the hour or when we started, there's still no announcements for ArgoCon or GetOpsCon, but there will be soon. So the announcement is that there will be an announcement. <laughs> it's the only and announcement that we had. The the CFPs for KubeCon close June 18th for KubeCon North America. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. 
Oh yeah, there's there's also um, a comments um, in Tel Aviv from where I understand, right? So oh, yeah, I'm not I'm not going to Israel. That's a long flight. I don't think they'll pay me to go there. Um, but uh, yeah, there's OpenShift Commons gonna happen in Tel Aviv for from what I understand. So I wish they don't they don't let me yeah. out of this. They don't let me out of this cave actually all that often. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's not really my job uh, scope to go uh, gallivanting around the world for things. Although I, I a little bit wish it was. Yeah. Um, are we the developers for the OpenShift GitOps operator? No, but we know some of them. Oh, yeah, I I know, I do know a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, I know a lot of them, um, and because of RH Tap, I think most of the companies, most of the company became an Argo CD expert just because we had uh, and a Tecton expert because that's what like the RH, RH tap. engineers. There's like 200 yeah. engineers involved in that. It is an insane yeah. number of people. Yeah. So that is to say, I used to know, I, I used to know all of them, but not anymore because all of a sudden there was a lot of resources <laughs> um, uh, applied to the, uh, um, uh, to that project, right? Which features Argo CD and Tecton. So uh, that's that's pretty cool. So if you have a, a question about that, uh, drop it drop it in the chat. Uh, Savion, Savion. I don't actually know how to pronounce that. That that may be French. Sav Savion. I'm afraid of it. I don't trust myself. Savion, Savion. Um, so yeah. So it's um. Uh, there was a lot of engineers on it. So I'll I'll, I'll tell you. So. <laughs> That was a for the longest time. I think all engine. I think there was like all hands on deck. All engineers had a little piece of that, a little bit, including you in managed services, right? Like in, yep. in yeah. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm I, I had that. I I transferred it off to somebody else at a certain point when my role changed. But for most of last year, I was the um, like SRE consultant for that project. Yeah. So it was. Uh... So it was cool. Um, I think uh, it was announcement service previous coming soon, so you guys can get your hands on it. Uh, pretty pretty cool. Um, uh, oh, <laughs> so he says, uh, <laughs> yeah yeah. Or my is it's random ge generated, so I don't think there's a right way to pronounce it. Okay, cool. Oh, that's oh well, yeah. You're, it looks like you're you're coming from um, from Twitch. So yeah, you can have a um, uh, yeah. It's like kind of generate the name for me. Those are kind of cool sometimes. Um, I know I know Ubuntu uses like weird uh, generators for their for their name, like uh, what was it? Uh, Intrepid Ibex was one of their like it's just like like randomly generated like kind That's of good. like two. Yeah. Oh, I almost just told you my my Reddit username, which I don't actually want to do because I don't I want people to see my Reddit. But my my Reddit yeah. username is the one that's randomly generated is kind of neat. Oh, okay, yeah, that's 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 really cool. Um, so again, you uh, can yeah. figure it out probably if you pay attention um, to uh, to certain tw certain Reddit spaces where Red Hatters might hang out. You can probably figure out which one is me. Yeah. But like, if you do, if you if you decide to do that, I'm not responsible. Yes, exactly. <laughs> do 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 so at your own peril. Is I think right. is what I'm hearing. Is what I'm hearing from <laughs> Reddit is a place anyway. Um. No, it's nothing that bad. Sometimes I'm just, uh, I swear a lot. So yeah, <laughs> I don't swear on this, but I actually swear a lot on Reddit. So yeah. So yeah. It, I mean, if you know, if you know Hillary in person, like I do, it's like a, talking to a sailor. So yes. It's a... <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. All right. We yeah, are. Cool. Um... Anyway, so uh, feel free to like, uh, where's you can tweet us if you have questions about the, um, about the operators, um, we can help you out or give you uh, give you people who can help you out. Uh, bye, Tal. Tal doesn't have work on Fridays because he's in Israel. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Have a good weekend. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. But he has work on Sundays, so you know, there's that. Um, yeah. Trade off. I think I'd rather work on Sundays, but that's just me. <laughs> I would rather work on Sundays. I I, I would like that schedule. Um, all right, we are like we're over time. I feel like we've made up for starting late now. Um, yeah. One of the. What are we, I don't actually know what we're doing in two weeks. So in, in two weeks, I will have some topic for us. There we go. An announcement um, of announcement. There you go. <laughs> yeah, there's an announcement of announcement. In two weeks, there will be some interesting topic that is GitOps or GitOps adjacent for us to discuss. There you go. Until such a time, <laughs> I will remind you all to choose your technical debt wisely, and I'll see you then. Cheers, everyone. Cheers.